For the first time this year on The Fan, we check in with our resident rugby league injury analyst at NRL Physio, otherwise known as Brian Sini. Welcome. Good to see you, Vossi. First segment this year, we want to talk about concussion mm. uh, because there are some changes happening. The New South Wales Rugby League introducing mandatory 14 days off. Mm. In layman's terms, first of all, what is a concussion? So a concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury, so an injury to the brain itself. All right, in, in the rugby league context of a match, I believe you can narrow it down to three ways that a player gets a concussion. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, the most common is a direct blow to the head. So an arm, an elbow, a knee, you know, we see that quite a lot in tackles. There are two other ways as well. The, the one that I like to really look at is the whiplash. So the sudden acceleration and deceleration of the head, that can also cause a concussion. Which can impact there across the chest. Absolutely. Fans don't realise that they're concussed from a blow there. Correct, and that, that's actually quite common. 20 to 30% the NRL find are actually not from blows to the head itself. Yep. And then the last one is a blow to the jaw. So obviously more common in sports like boxing, MMA, that kind of thing, but does happen in rugby league as well. Look, there'd be a lot of um, parents watching right now that uh, put their kids in headgear at a very early age thinking this will prevent my son or daughter from getting a, a concussion. Yes. Does headgear help? This is something I'm very passionate about, right. Andrew, and um, I certainly want to put out there today that concussion, as we now stand with the current evidence and the current technology, concussion unfortunately isn't prevented by the wearing of headgear. Headgear is very, very good to prevent head lacerations, skull fractures, <laughs> cauliflower ears, so surface injuries, yeah. but unfortunately headgear just doesn't have the ability to prevent the movement of the brain inside the skull, um, which is w what the main cause of concussion is. OK, and in your role um, as a rugby league injury analyst, what you see over the last few years, the, the way the, or the area we're headed, mm. are we on the right track? Does, does more need to be done? The mandatory standing down of players, where will that end? Look, I think we're definitely moving in the right direction. I mean, if you go back 10, 20 years, there was none of this, right? It was, you know, get up, tough it out, you'll be right. Yeah. So we're certainly moving in the right direction. The 14-day stand-down is once again moving in the direction of the evidence we currently have, um, which is we don't know if when the symptoms are all gone, does that mean the player is safe to return to play? So where we land is there's no set in stone rule at the moment. We're learning more with the research as it comes out, but certainly moving in that direction of making sure players are completely recovered before they return, we're heading in the right direction. That's the last point to make. Um, in the majority of concussions, symptoms clear in a set time frame? Yeah, so they find anywhere sort of around that 80 percent of concussions, the symptoms do tend to clear in seven to ten days, right. which is basically what we base our system on at the moment. So you go through that five to six day process, if you pass through symptom free, you're right to return to play. All right, so there you go. On the fan, we're starting at the top this year and going to work our way down, so to speak. See you next time at NRL Physio. Will do.